scientist, AR the equalizer, the data scientist of boxing, spinning the block for another breakdown. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. The round by round analysis. Y'all know what it is at this point. It's the round by round analysis. August 12th, Saturday night, top ring boxing, what up? Bob Arum, what up? Man, y'all can say what y'all want about Bob Arum, but one thing that I can say about top rank, they keep the fights coming, and they keep their fighters busy. That model is tried and true, man. Y'all can say whatever y'all want about their, their fighters not being able to sell out and to put up big numbers with pay-per-view events. I get it, but how many of us are actually boxing promoters? and actually putting up the millions to make the fights happen. It's so easy to sit on the couch and criticize. It's so easy to be professional couch sitters and criticize, you know what I mean? But when you make it happen, you make it happen. And Pop Barrow, he making it happen. I, I just wanted to get that shout out because the guy, man, he's been consistent for years as far as producing great fights, you know what I mean? Regardless of you know how you guys may take it, I know in boxing, we get very tribal, you know what I mean? If it ain't two blacks fighting or the black or a black fighting against somebody and outclassing them or beating them up, we don't want to get behind it. But I'm definitely behind this fight. I'm definitely behind this Mexican clash. I enjoyed myself tonight. I enjoyed seeing Emiliano Vargas do his thing in the, um, in the prelims fight leading up to the main event. That kid is a star in the mate. Game. Fernando Vargas, son, Emiliano Vargas. I just wanted to throw that bone out there to say that, man. Be on the lookout for him at the lightweight division. And my little bro brought something to my attention about Emiliano Vargas possibly matching up with Abdullah Mason. And, of course, they won't face each other now, but that would be a big fight in the next three to four years, in my opinion, if they uh, continue to stay and campaign at lightweight. But... I'll digress from getting too deep into that. I enjoy myself tonight. We're going to break down the round by round analysis of Emmanuel Navarrete and Oscar Valdez. A 12 round, 130 pound clash. Um, super featherweight bout, junior lightweight bout. Have a way you want to pronounce it or put it. But a junior lightweight bout, 12 round historical throwback Mexican clash. And Emmanuel Navarrete, he got off. I must say, man, the guy is very awkward. You know what I mean? I'll be alive if I said that I've watched every Emmanuel Navarrete fight. I'll be alive if I said that I've seen every fight and I've just been following him his whole career. I just got hip to him not too long ago but i do have enough film on them to be able to you know digest and break down what i see and i seen everything that i was supposed to see tonight emmanuel navarrete the guy he's very awkward he throws a barrage of punches like the guy is so relentless but it works for him it works for him now I'll be honest and say that it's only a matter of time before he steps in there with a very sharp sniper that can put his lights out. And, you know, I had a debate with, you know, someone on YouTube about um, Nawa Inouye's reign from, you know, 118 to, you know, 122. And the things that Nawa Inouye has been doing, and I stated that Nawa Inouye, he beats everybody from 122 pounds to 130 pounds, quite handily. And, you know, someone brought up Emmanuel Navarrete, Oscar Valdez, and uh, another boxer, man. I, is they not coming to mind? I can't, I can't think of who the other boxer was, but, you know, they were saying that Emmanuel Navarrete would give Nawa in a way problems. And, man, based off of what I've seen tonight, even though the guy was victorious, just feel like now we're in a way <laughs> they they don't want to see that happen but i'm i'm not going to take nothing away from what the man did tonight victorious 
knocked off Oscar Valdez. This was supposed to be a redemption fight for Oscar da Valdez, even though he had a victory over Omar Lopez not too long ago, following the loss to Shakir Stevenson. And, you know, that was a good redemptive effort. But I felt like, you know, um, Oscar Valdez, he struggled in the Omar Lopez fight. Um, he didn't look as sharp. He didn't look as crisp. You know, the confidence like looked like he was trying to reconstruct his confidence. So this fight was supposed to be the coming back out part. And he just couldn't, he couldn't do it, man. He couldn't do it. I gave Oscar Valdez, you know, a few rounds, you know, maybe four at the most, if that. But we go dive into it. I don't want to waste no more time giving an introduction, giving a backdrop. We're going to dive into it. Emmanuel Navarrete came into the fight four years younger. 28 years of age, Oscar Valdez, 32 years of age. Oscar Valdez, five foot, six inches. Emmanuel Navarrete, five foot, seven inches. The longer arms, the greater wingspan, the greater reach, it played to his advantage. Round one, both men waste no time in getting to the exchanges from the pocket. Little use of the jab from both fighters as both are looking to land hard power shots. Navarrete is getting the better of the exchanges with his greater arm length and punch output working to his advantage. Lunging with looping hard shots with 32 seconds left in round one, Navarrete throws a six punch combination backing up Oscar Valdez while landing five of those punches. This moment was pivotal as Navarrete takes control of a very competitive round. Round one goes to Emmanuel Navarrete, right? It, it was very competitive. These guys wasted no time trying to figure each other out, trying to, and that's what I love about some true classical Mexican hard, excuse me, Mexican hard hat type fighting. You know, I love it because it's non-traditional. Me myself, I'm I'm old school when it comes to this boxing. You know what I mean? Work behind the jab, utilize lateral movement. You know what I mean? Get in and out of the pocket. You know what I mean? Fight in the pocket in certain spots, but stay on the outside. Make the man come to you. Just I love outbox it. I, I love boxers who outbox you know what I mean outbox the aggressor but this right here it was mano a mano aggressor versus aggressor and even though Oscar Valdez he's more of a patient guy he can play the aggressive role but he's patient he looks for his big shots but this was a delight to see you know what I mean two guys just letting it go and trying to knock each other head off you know what I mean relentlessly but you know, we'll move on to round two. Round two, it starts off, you know, much slower. It's a calculated pace from both men as Valdez is capitalizing off of a change of momentum from Emmanuel Navarrete. Both fighters have decent moments in this round, but as the round came to a close, Valdez connects with a hard looping counter left hook to get Navarrete's attention. In which in this round, I gave it to Oscar Valdez um, for the very sole reason that Emmanuel Navarrete, he exerted so much energy, throwing a lot of punches in round one. Like, I, I really couldn't believe it. Like, man, these guys, really Emmanuel Navarrete, I'm like, man, this guy is going for it in round. Like, this dude, he don't care, bro. You know what I mean? And I don't speak with explicit language, so I ain't, yeah, y'all get me. But I'm like, this dude don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's no cares given at all. It's like, this guy, is, is he's coming for it. It ain't no fill-out rounds with him. He's he just going straight for the knockout. You know what I mean? Looking for those big money shots. I love it, though, man. But in round two, he slowed down. He slowed down, um, and Oscar Valdez capitalized off it, you know, because he is a, a counterpuncher. He's a patient counterpuncher, and... He 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 got off with those counter punches. We'll move on to round three. The awkward lunging attack of Emmanuel Navarrete is posing as a problem for Oscar Valdez as he struggles toward the attack off. 
getting hit clean in the middle of the round. Oscar Valdez looks to counter the looping shots that Navarrete is throwing, but the timing appears to be a split second short as Navarrete is avoiding these counters. Um, round three, I've given to Emmanuel Navarrete. Um, it was it went back to the intensity of round one. Round three, Navarrete, he gets right back to work. As you can see in round two, you know, he's, you know, taking his time. He's not throwing as many punches. And he was fighting in spots in round two, but I feel like Valdez, he he capitalized off of those dull moments. But round three, Navarrete, he wasted no time. He got right back to it. It's like they gave him some Gatorade, and his energy went right back up to 100%. And he just start going to work. Round four, Navarrete continues to apply relentless pressure on Oscar Valdez, albeit Navarrete is appearing to show signs of fatigue. Oscar Valdez's timing on his counter seems to be starting to connect, but still is failing to neutralize and nullify Navarrete's attack. That said, another round goes to Navarrete. Round four, Oscar Valdez, you can see that he's trying his best to find that perfect counter shot that he had caught um, Miguel Burchelt with, you know what I mean? He's looking for those perfect moments, but Navarrete is just so awkward, man. Switching from orthodox to southpaw and throwing punches while he's doing just super awkward, man. And Oscar Valdez, he struggled. He struggled to find the rhythm in this fight because Navarrete, he just applied that pressure, man. And it's not like Navarrete was throwing some light. Like um, Tim Bradley say, um, feather duster punches. He was definitely not throwing a little pity pat punch. This dude was throwing some heavy, hard leather. And it kept Valdez on his feet. It kept Valdez backing up. And round four, that's what the tale of the story was. Um, round five, the story does not change with Navarrete as he continues to pressure Oscar Valdez with very awkward points of entry and attacking. Navarrete is throwing more punches, but Oscar Valdez's patience is starting to pay dividends as his left hook is finding, is finding a home with Navarrete. With one minute and 10 seconds left in round five, Valdez lands a very hard left hook counter that backs up Navarrete, followed by a few more counter hooks. Round five goes to Oscar Valdez, in my opinion. So... At this point, I've given um, round two and round five to Oscar Valdez. You know what I mean? And just like in round two, round five, Navarrete, he's applying the pressure, but his punch output is not the same. He's steady coming forward, but he's not throwing as many punches as he did the previous round. And just like, you know, from round one to round two, it's the same thing with from you know, round four to round five. He throws so many punches in the previous round that the following round, he's trying to recover. He's tired. And Oscar Valdez, you know, being, he's being sharp. You know, him being the sharp puncher, counter puncher that he is, he's capitalizing on Navarrete just coming forward with not much behind, you know, coming forward and, you know, Valdez connecting with hard shots. That that's just that's just what it was, man. We'll move on to round six. At this point of the fight, Navarrete's awkward attack is starting to backfire on him as he becomes more fatigued from the excess volume of punches causing him to tire. As fatigue sets in, Oscar Valdez is now timing Navarrete clean with those counter looping hooks. Round six is a clear round one. For Oscar Valdez in my opinion this round was the most clearest for Oscar Valdez and at this point of the fight I felt like shoot Valdez all right he about to take off Valdez might stop this guy he might just catch him with that Miguel Burchell hook you know what I'm saying that counter punch he might just catch Navarrete with that that's what I was expecting because round six it was so clear that I thought Valdez had it. I'm like, all right, you know, the 
fights really don't start in championship fights until round six. So, boom, here we go. Valdez about to take off. And that appeared not to be the case going into round seven. Both men look to be fading at this point of the fight, but Navarrete appears to be the more fatigued fighter from what I can see. Valdez is capitalizing on this change of momentum for the first half of this round but as the one minute 30 second mark approaches the halfway mark of round seven Navarrete turns up the volume and manages to land a total of 21 punches out of 99 punches thrown in round seven unbelievable watching this in real time I'm like all right yeah Navarrete man this dude getting tired but halfway through round seven the dude just turned it up out of nowhere and just start throwing punches i'm like was he playing possum or what because the round was looking like a valdez round but he just turned it around one minute 30 seconds left in round seven the guy turns it around it makes it a clear round for him this round it definitely goes to emmanuel navarrete as he rallies late very late with like 20 seconds left in the round he just rallied he just he went on a rampage. He did his thing. Round seven goes to Emmanuel Navarrete. Round eight. Navarrete is back in control of the pace of this fight. Finding success in backing up Oscar Valdez and getting out of the way of those counter hooks by simply pulling back. He's just pulling back. He's not catching these shots. He's not slipping. He's not ducking. He's just pulling back. An old school Muhammad Ali. Pull counter. That's all. He's just pulling back pulling himself back valdez is making the mistake of not following up his single punches and it's causing for him to give up rounds now now after a successful round six the fight is really getting away from oscar valdez at this point it's really getting away as navarrete is landing some hard shots and he's starting to swell up the the, the right eye of oscar valdez he's just busting them up at this point nose is busted he's busting up oscar valdez and the fight is getting away from oscar valdez round eight goes to emmanuel navarrete round nine to start round nine emmanuel navarrete appears to have hurt his right hand as he is reluctant to let it go however with 25 seconds into the round valdez lands yet another heavy left hook on Navarrete backing him up to the ropes this time and on the replay Valdez actually stepped on the foot of Navarrete but nonetheless Navarrete was already backing up so the shot must have hurt him it's just you know the the step on the foot the trip it, it made it look more worse than what it was but this was a pivotal moment for Valdez as Navarrete's punch output has decreased immensely the right hand must have been giving him some problems Valdez controlled the pace of this round. Round nine goes to Valdez, right? Now, round 10, here we go. It was a total trade show. <laughs> round 10 was a total trade show. Like they were just going back and forth. Um, for the majority of the round, Oscar Valdez does a great job at neutralizing Navarrete's attack, catching those hooks and parrying the straight punches while countering effectively however however with 30 seconds left in the round navarrete lands the cleaner shots on valdez with relentless punch output thus closing the right eye of oscar valdez due to major swelling a swing round indeed in a definite slugfest but i give round 10 to navarrete we'll move on round 11 Oscar Valdez comes out swinging for the fences to start round 11. Man, he comes out just bull rushing, bulldozing. He finds some success backing up Emmanuel Navarrete, but Navarrete's length and punch volume yet again turns the fight in his favor as Valdez is struggling to effectively neutralize the attack. Round 11 goes to Emmanuel Navarrete. Act like you know act like you know we are in the championship rounds round 11 just finished up <laughs> at this point um eddie reynoso was telling oscar valdez look man you need a knockout 
you you need to knock out to win this fight. And I agree with Eddie Reynoso. Oscar Valdez, he's he's let the fight get far away from him, being too patient, and he's beat up at this point, and it's hard to make a rally. Going into round 12, the awkward point of attack from Navarrete is and has been posing as a serious threat to Oscar Valdez. The right eye of Oscar Valdez is completely shut and he takes serious damage as Navarrete backs up Valdez the whole round with relentless pressure and high punch volume. Valdez shows so much heart but comes up short to close out the fight and final round. Round 12 goes to Emmanuel Navarrete without a shadow of a doubt. And that won him the fight. You know what I mean? That won him the fight. Like I said earlier, it was a fight that I enjoyed. You know, the, the whole time it was very entertaining. You know what I mean? Nothing was really textbook in this fight. It was just, you know, let, let's see who can last. Let's let's punch each other brains out and let's see who lasts. But I'll run down the punch stats. You know what I mean? Just to solidify the things that I was seeing in the fight. And to put data, I am the data scientist of boxing, to put data behind my hypothesis for we have total punches thrown from Emmanuel Navarrete, 1,038 punches, total punches thrown. Oscar Valdez, 436 punches thrown. According to CompuBox, that is. According to CompuBox. Um, Punch connect percentage, Emmanuel Navarrete, 21%, Oscar Valdez, 32%. And this stat, it shows us that Valdez, he was the more cleaner puncher. You know, he was sharper, he was more accurate. But, I mean, you you can't you can't deny the, the pressure that Navarrete applied. His punches was not the cleanest, they weren't the cutest, it didn't look sweet, sexy at all, but it worked for him, and it got him the victory. Total punches landed to the body of Emmanuel Navarrete. 16 total punches landed to the body. Oscar Valdez, 32 total punches landed to the body. Total punches overall landed Emmanuel Navarrete, 216. Oscar Valdez, 140. Uh, jabs thrown. Emmanuel Navarrete, 434. Oscar Valdez, 118. Jabs landed. Emmanuel Navarrete, 40 jabs landed. Oscar Valdez, 26 jabs landed. Jabs connect percentage. Emmanuel Navarrete, 9%. Oscar Valdez, 22%. Power punches thrown. Emmanuel Navarrete, 604. Woo! Crazy. This guy's a machine. Um, Oscar Valdez, power punches thrown, 318. Uh, power punches landed, Emmanuel Navarrete, 176. Oscar Valdez, 114. Power punch connect percentage, Emmanuel Navarrete, 29%. Oscar Valdez, 36%. There you have it. The proof is in the pudding. The guy who was the aggressor, the guy who applied pressure, had the greater punch output, was successful. He was successful. No matter how many clean counters that Oscar Valdez had hit Navarrete with, it wasn't effective. It only backed him up about a good five times in this fight. But Valdez, he was on the back foot the whole fight, backing up. So you compare five times backing up to the rest of the, the majority of the fight, come on, who you think won? Navarrete, they got that. Now, the judges, I don't know what fight they were watching. Like, those scorecards was very wide, like a little too wide for my liking. And that that's what disappoints me. And I don't know, man, top rank need to get that right because they judges been on one lately. Like, they judges really been on one. But, man, that's neither here nor there. The better man won tonight. That's just what it is, man. 25 minutes into the video, people. Please, like the content. You know what I mean? Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. 
Share this with your friends and family in the boxing community. You know, tap in with your boy. Tap in with your boy. Hit the notification bell to get notified of the fire that I'm dropping often. Don't be a hater. Don't be a hater, man. Smash this like button. I see it's a lot of people viewing this stuff, but they not hitting it. Man, y'all got to smash the like button, man, so we can reach a broader audience. You know what I mean? But it's been real. That's all I got for y'all. It's AR the Equalizer. Until next time, family. We out.